to uh, dive more specifically on two key regions. Uh, Mr. Okurei, uh, Sam, uh, let's start with you, please. And uh, thank you for sharing your, your vision of uh, what Africa is, uh, of the African situation, but also your own experience as an investor uh, and providing us with uh, your, this, this experience of a private stakeholder. Absolutely. Um, thank you, everybody. And of course, uh, great to be here again for the second time in a row. And I'm just going to take uh, from where Mr. Cullen stopped, and which is the impact of geopolitics on food production, food consumption, nutrition, um, on emerging markets, especially the vulnerable emerging markets like, like Africa, for example. And the, the essence of this is why governments in uh, Africa and especially other vulnerable emerging markets should, should care, should care about what is happening in the rest of the world. Uh, from Russia-Ukraine crisis or to lately the Israeli-Gaza uh, uh, conflict or uh, as the case may be, what is happening between the United States and China, between uh, India and China, or as the case may be. And I think the most vivid example of why this is, is, is important is last year when we started to see the crisis that started in Sri Lanka as a result of you know, the crisis in, in Russia, Ukraine, uh, what started to happen in Africa, in many parts of Africa, um, with the uh, impact of what is happening in those parts of the world on food production in uh, some of these vulnerable uh, markets. And we say vulnerable because it's interesting to learn that uh, for many countries in Africa, the staple foods, the staple diets in these countries are still imported. Whether it is bread, which is consumed in many parts of Africa, and main ingredient being wheat, and wheat you know, coming from uh, Ukraine and Russia, for example, uh, whether it's in maize, corn, which is a very staple in Africa, and it is net imported uh, into Africa today, uh, or whether it's even cassava, for example, in West Africa, which is not just a staple, but a base ingredient for a lot of the products that are consumed uh, in, in Africa beyond food and um, uh, beyond uh, nutrition. So the interesting thing to note here is, for example, why these countries should start to care and why protectionism happening in many parts of, of the world starts to impact um, on uh, countries like, uh, like Africa, for example. And there are very interesting themes that start to happen, and it's interesting that Mr. Colin has pointed out a lot of them in, in his presentation. And, you know, some of these very interesting themes that start to happen is, for example, protectionism. Uh, we've seen, for example, the, the uh, uh, ban by uh, India on rice exports and how that starts to have a very important impact in countries like Nigeria, for example, Kenya, all over Africa, where rice has become uh, a big staple. And uh, the interesting thing that protectionism starts to, to do is that it starts to make food a weapon. Uh, because there is social unrest in these countries as a result of these situations. Uh, there is a lot of uh, problems that start to, to come out of it, like migration. I mean, we start to see a lot of people uh, migrating from Africa into, into Europe and the Mediterranean Sea now becoming uh, uh, almost a, a cemetery, if you like. And 12 out of the 54 countries in Africa have declared a food emergency this year as a result of the protectionist or the inflationary or the uh, geopolitical impact of what is happening in other parts of the world other than, than Africa itself. So it's important to point out things like you know, health challenges, uh, food as a weapon, uh, protectionism, inflation, and so on and so forth, you know, being the consequential effects of geopolitics in these parts of the world. Now, following this then is what should African countries or what should these vulnerable emerging markets start to look out for or start to do in order then to make sure that food security becomes uh, a focal point of their policy agendas in order to make sure that there's not only a secure and, and peaceful environment in these countries, but that there is a very healthy population in, this, in these parts of the world. And I think the first thing that starts to become very important is, uh, first of all, 
building resilience in the supply chains or building resilience in, in uh, uh, the infrastructure that allows you know, for these countries to make sure that they get food back home. And this can, can go all the way from nearization or localization of these supply chains to make sure that uh, urbanization is good, uh, of course, but urbanization, of course, does not have to come at the cost of uh, depleting agricultural uh, uh, lands or depleting investment in agricultural practices to boost production uh, of food in, in uh, uh, these parts of the world. Next to that is technology, research, digitization, if you like. And it was very interesting in some of the presentations that we saw earlier today. If you go around supermarkets here in the Middle East, you find tomatoes, you find cherries, you find berries and the kinds of things that you would never expect to, to grow in this part of the world now being grown here uh, in the United Arab Emirates, for example. And that has gone a long way in securing uh, the, the food uh, system in these parts of the world. And this is something that African countries then have to start to put a big focus on to ensure that you know, there is localization and there is near realization, if you like, uh, of production basis, and this has to be held by technology. It has to be held by research, uh, conservation of water, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, of course, there is diplomacy and multilateral engagement, uh, and for uh, countries in Africa to start to understand that there is every reason to care about what is happening in other parts of the world, that a war in Ukraine is not just a Ukrainian and Russian problem that uh, the, the face-off between uh, India, for example, uh, and uh, China is not just an India-China problem, or that the, the global uh, trade dispute between the United States and China is not just a United States and China problem. That, of course, it's a global village today, and it's very important that uh, diplomatic relationships or multilateral efforts at solving these problems, either from a regional perspective, ECOWAS, or an African Union perspective, is key uh, and important in making sure that we keep a big focus on uh, all of these. Of course, there is targeted uh, fiscal and monetary policy. Inflation is a big issue today, and inflation is a big issue in these parts of the country, uh, in these parts of the world that I'm talking about, not just from uh, a local perspective, but also from a, a global perspective. There is the impact of the fact that, like I said earlier, almost all of the staples in African cuisine and diets today is imported. You have the double whammy of uh, um, uh, the deterioration of the currencies in, the, in these parts of the world vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the US dollar, that is the currency that you require, or euro, or as the case may be, to make sure that these imports are, are brought in. And of course, the inflationary effects of it, the energy costs, and, and so on and so forth. Then, last but not least, there is, of course, the key importance that has to be paid to sustainability and sustainability finance, or climate finance, because, of course, we have to preserve uh, the production systems in these parts of the world is very important that governments start to make sure that climate related finance or sustainability related finance is paid a very important uh, uh, attention uh, because for example uh, the kinds of resources that we need to make sure that food production is uh, is uh, kept at its premium is extremely important whether it is water whether it is uh, uh, forestation, or as the case may be, is, is paid a very keen, uh, uh, keen attention to. Now, uh, in summary, the, the essence of this is to start to understand, of course, the impact of geopolitics on, on you know, food systems, and these are some of the very important things that, that need to be done in order to make sure that these countries have a very, very keen focus on why it is important to start to care about what's happening uh, uh, in, in the rest of the world. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Okulhi, and uh, also for helping us making uh, one step further after Mr. Cullen's presentation and highlighting uh, how intertwined are the issues and uh, how uh, uh, geopolitics uh, and food security uh, have uh, tight relations. Uh, and. Um, <clears throat> 
it's not only about producing and consuming in Africa, but also managing the relationships and caring about what happens in the rest of the, of the world.